and uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to Radio Works World. And uh, yes, Jonathan Truss here, a wildlife artist, professional wildlife artist for the last 30 years. And uh, you're very welcome. Lovely. Now, what led you first into painting, Jonathan? Uh, it, well, apart from obviously paying the paying the bills, um, I, uh, my wife was in a gallery and she saw a particular painting that she really liked, and she said, "Can we buy it?" And I said, "No, look, I'll go and buy me some paint." Um, it was my birthday, and I said, "I'll paint it for you," rather arrogantly, and uh, that's exactly what happened. Except I didn't paint what she wanted; I just painted what I wanted, which was wildlife. So from that day on, I painted wildlife, and I didn't stop. It was. Uh, it took me. It took over my life actually. As soon as I picked that paintbrush up, I put the uh, guitar down that I've been playing professionally for ten years, and uh, away we went. And I absolutely is completely absorbing. And I just feel sorry for everybody that perhaps picks a paintbrush up when they retire and they don't get the joys of painting until perhaps you know later on in life. I fortunately I I had enough time in the day to practice because I was playing guitar in the evening. So it afforded me um, to turn a hobby into a living, which is what I've done for the last thirty years. <laughs> wow, I love that. What initially inspired you into getting into uh, painting, or did you just pick up the paintbrush and see what you could do? Um, well, I was into wildlife. Uh, animals were always my thing, so it seemed the natural thing to paint was animals. Um, my, um, I always say to people, if you want to improve, and I get asked a lot about you know career choices and what have you with, within um, the painting world, and I said, well, look, if you really want to improve at what you do, you have to paint what you love, and uh, for me, it's animals, so I've painted animals from day one. You know, if you're into flowers or landscapes or wherever you're into, you, or portraiture, that's uh, you've got to follow uh, what you're uh, interested in, otherwise you're never going to improve. You know, there's no shortcuts. You've got to paint and paint and paint, paint as much as you can, and you'll learn uh, eye-hand coordination. It's sort of muscle memory stuff. It's automatic, but you do gain an eye for everything. When you start painting, it changes everything. It changes the way you look at everything, the way you think about everything. But in particular, you know, when you look at uh, colors, trees, sky, what have you, and you start to think, oh, well, I wonder what color that is. Um, so it does take over. It does take over. It found, I found it taking over my life far more than when I was a musician. Um, that was um, another life. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> both of us are <laughs> mesmerized by you because you see, Jonathan. Um, to me, uh, I I remember when I was a child, I was going to a um, poetry competition, but for some reason I, I got lost and I end up in a in a painting competition. So anyway, there are people who are studying arts and uh, their parents were spending fortunes to to um, educate for their education and they were practicing with with great masters and uh, anyway here I was um, I think I was 12 and um, they, they gave me this blank canvas and uh, then they said uh, go and I, I had no idea was happening by start painting and I won that competition and everybody was thinking who is this girl where is she coming from you know like and I told them I'm I'm going now to to my uh, poetry competition. <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> so so you see, to me, um, since then, um, painting uh, is silent poetry, and uh, pa painting is it's actually. I don't know if I don't mind. I I, I hope you don't mind me saying this. It's almost an illusion <laughs> because it's that vision, it's that piece of magic you you, you have in 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 your mind, and uh, you see what other people don't see. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it's not what you see or, or, or what other people see is what you see. <laughs> how 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 do you cope with with that message, that internal voice that is is guiding you when you are in front of that blank canvas mm. well, you, you choose the colors and what's happening tell us well you have to um, when you first start painting you'll have to learn to use your master colors a palette and you know after 30 years of what I've been doing every single day for eight to ten hours a day I mean if you don't improve you're in trouble really aren't you, you better find something else you're good at perhaps write poetry or write a song or play the guitar or something else um, but I stared at a blank canvas for a couple of months before I got going I just was too afraid that I'd let myself down uh, because I didn't have any formal instruction there was no lessons to be had um, so it's just you just make a lot of mistakes so now when I look at a canvas I mean wildlife art is what I'm into I mean painting wildlife and it's a thin line really between art 
and illustration? Is wildlife art illustration or is it art? Well, if I'm working on a canvas which is a complicated composition of many elephants in a scene with you know, some umbrella acacias and what have you, or maybe Kilimanjaro in the background or whatever, and you're working on all the points of reference you've, you've gained from being out in Africa taking lots of photographs, you put all those images together on one canvas, you know, that truly is art because, uh, and, and it's inspirational. I mean, the inspiration is obviously gained when you're actually in Africa. But when you're working on the images and put them on the canvas, the perspective's got to be right, all the shadows, the light, the color has always got to be right, right across the scene right across the landscape. So it really is art, I think, in its truest form. Although it's not like riding your bike on a canvas and, you know, and throwing a load of a bucket of uh, uh, oil uh, onto a canvas and then interpreting it into something perhaps you think it is or what you're trying to say it is. With my art, it's very, um, it's obvious. As soon as you look at it, you know what it looks. If a tiger's a tiger, then if it looks like a tiger, then it's, it's and, it look, and it looks, perhaps it's photographic, Perhaps that makes a great painting, perhaps it doesn't. Um, but is it art? I don't know. I mean, I don't give that a lot of thought, to be honest with you. I just love painting wildlife, and I just do what I do, and hopefully people come along and buy it if they like it. Oh, my goodness. But, Jonathan, I mean, your tiger. I think I stood staring at your tiger for about half an hour. I stared at him a lot longer than that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know, but you could see every single individual hair on the tiger's face. You could see the moisture in its eyes and the... The saliva and its teeth and its jaws. Oh my gosh! I mean, don't ever put yourself down. Your work—it's like looking at a photograph that's been yeah. so clearly taken with all of the vibrant colors. And yeah, I think if people appreciate that work, they've got to just go onto your website and just have a look at your pieces. They are stunning. Yeah, my um, my website's a little out of date actually. It's better look at uh, my wildlife artist page on Facebook, which is Jonathan Trust, Wildlife Artist, click on that and um, like that, then you can see all the, the newest images. I think my website's about a year and a half out of date. I've been a bit rubbish at that. I'm more interested in uh, painting, really, than, I don't know, I'm, I'm lucky to have a decent publisher and uh, all my work gets distributed through them, so the website has, has felt less uh, relevant to me, although I must do something about that <laughs> if I could get my head around it. I'm always into the, the painting, that's the thing, I've got a canvas I'm staring out right now, you know, uh, raring to go. I've just started it. Happens to be another tiger commission, um, which I'm going to get into. And I've got paintings in my head that I want to do. There's always a list of paintings. It's, it's always a compromise, really. I've got to pay the bills, but there's also stuff that I want to paint. Um, you know, as an artist, you've got to be commercial if you want to make a living at it, but you've got to be slightly different as well. Very, very difficult. It's almost a bit of a contradiction that uh, you have to... You know, you have to sell your work. You have to want people to buy it. Now, when you're sell, you look at that tiger and you, you know, you appreciate it for what it is. Um, that's exactly what um, you know you want from people to actually look at, look at the detail, appreciate the work, the skill, um, possibly the talent um, uh, that's gone into it, and then maybe buy it. That's what it's all about, really. But I enjoy the process. I enjoy everything about about the art, producing the work, and uh, then of course the end product. When somebody buys it, it's a great compliment. Mm. Now, for people who don't know your work, Jonathan, the the most recent painting of the tiger that I got the privilege to see at um, at the exhibition recently, just last week up in Birmingham in the UK, um, can you describe that amazing tiger? That um, not the one that I was staring at for such a long time, but the other picture, your newest one that we touched on. Um, can you share what that was all about um, and what you? Yeah, yeah. That's um that particular one is. I just wanted to try something different. I had some ideas in my head, and I just want to see whether I could actually do it. Uh, that was a tiger jumping through the frame. It was actually for a competition, which it didn't succeed in getting into, uh, which I was quite surprised about. So I thought it was quite um quite unique, and it had a conservation message as well. The, the painting was called Nowhere to Run. Uh, the tiger was actually jumping out of the frame. Um, you'll need to go on my uh, wildlife site to have a look at that on Facebook. But the image was completely made up of five different tigers. I uh, conceived it in my head, and it's interesting whether you can actually sort of pull it off in a way to see whether you can actually put what you want on the canvas without feeling hugely disappointed with the end result. The lovely thing about oils, of course, you can just go over and over it again until it works, until you think it works anyway. Um, and also I had to paint the actual frame onto the canvas to make it look real, and that's the thing you have to. 
it, that was really key to that piece to make the frame of the painting within the painting look real. It has to look real or it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, hopefully I pulled it off. I was really pleased with that piece and um, I'm sure somebody's going to be a, a proud owner of it in the next sort of week or two, I should imagine. Well, it certainly had so much attention and it, it's, you know, you have to kind of go up really close to get the, f the full um, picture of this enormous frame and then within this enormous frame another frame with the tiger as you say literally jumping through that frame at an angle it's it's incredible and the paws you can almost feel as if you could touch the paws the front paws of the tiger as it's pouncing through this frame um, yeah one it's a funny, sorry I interrupt you it's a funny thing is though uh, you're trying to find something different to, to paint and I thought that was different and it's not till I researched the painting that uh, or the idea that I found there was a whole genre of uh, it's called trompe d'oeil, uh, which is French for I think it's for uh, deceiving eye, and that's what it was all about, 3D art. And I hadn't realised there was a whole genre of those sort of paintings that are out there. Uh, so it's quite interesting, you know, trying to be different is very difficult. It's all been done. I mean, wildlife art's been around longer than any form of art, of course, 30, 40, 50,000 years uh, since the first cave painting. So it really has been around a long time. It's only been resurrected in the last sort of 30, 30 or 40 years properly. Um, people are more interested in perhaps that than they are uh, religious scenes and scenes of battle and you know galleons on on the high seas. Everything changes. It's uh, just a trend and hopefully it continues. That's fascinating. Really fascinating. Absolutely brilliant. And um, you don't just paint from um, a picture that you find. You, you actually tell our listeners what you actually go and do in order to get the scene that you want. You don't just sit in your living room looking at the telly or flicking through books. What do, what do you do, Jonathan? No, well, um, a great artist, um, and a mate of mine, David Shepard, once said to me, he said, uh, you know, if you want to paint elephants, you've got to go and see them. And he's absolutely right. You know, if I want to paint a great white shark, I'll have to go and see one, which is what I did. And you, you cage dive or you, you camp out in the national parks. I mean, this year in Botswana, I'll be camping out uh, with a couple of friends in and, and the national parks for... Uh, a while, and you get inspired. You you, you get the animals up, pers you know, close and personal, trying to get uh, the reference that you need to uh, be inspired to get your next painting underway. Um, so you need to go out there and see the animal. It's very very important. You're just not going to uh, be able to work from photographs. You know, that's just. Uh, I mean, you work from photographs, of course, but you need to see the animal. You need to see what you're painting. Otherwise, you're not the real deal, really, are you? And tell everybody. I remember um, admiring your hippos picture and. And, and being quite taken aback at watching the water from your actual painting glistening and sort of rolling off the hippos' backs. How, how did that? How did that inspiration come about to you? Well, yeah, that particular painting was probably um, three or four scenes there. We I'd be on the lower Zambezi, which I've been very many times canoed up the Zambezi lots, um, and uh, the hippos are the most dangerous animal in Africa, probably. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty risky, and sometimes scary, and um, but very exciting. And you just want to get that reference, get as close as you can, get those hippos running across the sandbank because they're just sat on the bank there, and it's not a very, you know, interesting photograph. They're just, uh, just sat there. So you want them to get them running along if you can uh, through the water, get some movement in the water. And that particular painting, there was uh, three or four sets of photographs. I think probably a few of the hippos are the same ones. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, painting water is an art in in itself. Uh, and uh, I didn't get it right for many, many years, many, many, many years. You really have to think water when you're painting water. Your paintbrush becomes, um, almost becomes the water itself. That sounds a bit corny, that, but it's true. Uh, you have to really uh, think about what you're doing and think water when you're painting water. So if you can pull that off, then, you know, it, um, for the, from the viewer's perception, I think it's quite special because... You know, it's not just making the hippos look like hippos. You've got to make the water look like water, and also wet skin with the sheen off it with bright sun. And uh, you, if you want to, I think, paint water, you need to paint it with uh, some good light on it because it's all about light art, obviously, um, light and composition, shadows and all that stuff. So if you haven't got the light on that skin of the hippo shining with that that water, it's lovely. It's great fun to paint and uh, very very satisfying. Mm. Uh, you you do have such an understanding of the water because the, the hippos are literally scrambling across each other almost, bounding through the water and, and the, the water is just going absolutely everywhere. And it, unless you get really close and until you get really close, it really it does look like 
an exceptional photograph. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, and the other one I love was the, the two zebras. Yeah. Oh, dipping through the water. Yeah, zebras, uh, I've sat on the the river, the, the Mara River for many, many years, uh, for, you know, um, days at a time, waiting for the migration to cross, and I've been lucky enough to see it. Um, at least on 15 different years, at uh, different occasions, and many times when I'm over there. And it's always spectacular, it's always very exciting, it's one of the great wildlife spectacles. So, um, I've done lots of zebras in water, uh, but the one you saw was just a couple of zebras crossing the uh, crossing the Mara River. Yeah, trying to, okay. Trying to get that water right, it's uh, quite a challenge. Mm. And, and tell our listeners, because there's one you did of a polar bear, is that, where on earth, that's, that's such an interesting painting. Um, yeah. Where did you did you actually go? <laughs> uh, no, I've not yet. To, I've not been to. Uh, I've been to uh, up towards Alaska, but um, I've actually rather fraudulently, I must say, I've never actually seen a polar bear in the wild. So um, I've been all over the place: Galapagos, Cut Islands, Madagascar, Canada, and all sorts of places. But I've never actually seen. I've been to India as well, and Asia, and seen tigers in the wild. But I've never seen a polar bear in the wild. So you have to use a lot of artistic license. But that's you know. I'm an artist, so you create a scene in your head and uh, you just roll with it. A very, very occasionally, I'll buy a, an image under license from a photographer and use that, which possibly I did on that occasion. I can't quite remember. The polar bear one was it was fascinating because it it had the polar bear right at the top of the picture, ah. and, um, and then the depth, the whole of the depth, it was you know like the tip of the iceberg was a polar bear, and then the whole of the ice, and then the water underneath it. Yes, I remember. Sorry, that particular one was uh, actually. Yeah. That conceived of an idea I had, um, and then once again, just like the tiger jumping the frame, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I was pleased with that one, though. Um, it was a very difficult colour to produce the underwater, those sort of emerald greens and blues. And that particular painting won the BBC Wildlife Artist of the Year Frozen Planet category. Um, oh, there you go. I'm not surprised. It's it's so so wonderful, Jonathan. And, you know, and you're such an inspiration for people everywhere who you know want to f follow their passion. Um, and people who don't perhaps think that they're as good as they are, like you, you know, you, it's like water off a duck's back to you. But anybody who sees your work is just blown away by your technique and your, you know, artistic prowess and the fact that you paint every single day. And I know you paint every single day because every time I speak with you, you're I need to go. I'm in the middle of a painting, or I've just got to finish this, or yeah, yeah. So, no, I love it. I love it. And I, sorry, I, I always said that you know, if I was a millionaire, I'd still be painting, and it's absolutely true. It's uh, yeah, to get inspiration with people, and yet that's not always what you did. So, you know, how did you come across painting in the first place? Because you had like loads of different lives before you got to that stage. Yeah, I was a cabaret artist as an impersonator, and um, uh, I, played, I did that for a while. I was a musician for ten years. I did fifteen hundred gigs professionally. Absolutely hated it in the end. Mm. Um, as soon as I picked a paintbrush up, I thought I really, really like this. I've got to make a living at it. The thing is with me that it's different from maybe for other people is I had more confidence than ability. And I've always been pretty confident about what I do and not arrogantly confident, but you have to have the self-belief. You really do. Um, people ask me a lot, how do you make a living at being an artist? You know, how do you approach galleries? The bottom line is, you know, it sounds terrible, but if, if the gallery can make money out of you, they'll take you on. So it's all about that for them. I mean, for you, it's your art. You need the confidence. You must have confidence to get it out there. These days, it's so easy. You can approach 100 galleries a day. You know, Back in my day, you could only do one every two months because you had to send your images off, physically send them off with uh, six by by four um, transparencies, and it was a very difficult process. Now it's easy. You know, If you're an artist and you want to make a living at it, just get it out there. But you need confidence, and that's what I had. I had a lot of confidence, which um, I don't know where that came from. Uh, Self-belief, definitely. Yeah. But, um, Jonathan, uh, sorry, Natasha. I wanted to to ask you this. So, you definitely carry the um, the, the the picture, um, the vision of your art in, in your mind, in your head, before you start painting. And from uh, what I've seen on on your page, and it's so beautiful. And I, I'm thinking, we were talking before. You were talking before about um, the light, and then. Um, Seems that the light is is an essential um, trick <laughs> to bring that divine message out. 
And uh, I was wondering, what, what do you think? Is, is um, painting a science or an art? Or how, how do you feel? Because you master it and you got the confidence and um, you know that no matter who loves or uh, don't understand or do understand the message, you know you can't stop, you can't help it. So what is, in, in your view, your work, your divine work, is that art or science? Um, yeah, you know what, it's a tricky question to answer because I'm just me, you know, I don't consider myself anything else, I'm just me, I see something I like, I want to paint it. It's not always something I've seen in the wild, sometimes I'll see a bit of photographic reference and I just think, you know, that's so beautiful, I don't want to plagiarize that, that photograph, I really don't, but I just want to see if I can actually physically challenge myself to put that on the canvas, because you know what? It always amazes me. You've got ten tubes of paint in front of you, oil paint, and you've got half a dozen brushes. What you've got to do is use those brushes, get that paint out of those tubes, and make it look like that photograph or that, that scene that you've seen. And and it happens, and it's like magic. It really is. You know, I'll never quite get over that. The brain of a human is an amazing thing. It's amazing what we're capable of just when we, we put our mind to it. I mean, look what, uh, you know, I'm just talking to this Apple computer here. It's an amazing thing to have, isn't it, uh, what we can do. And, oh, it's no different, you know, what, what we're all capable of. Um, I don't know what the future holds for me as far as art goes, though. I've got lots of ideas, and I'm just going to keep on painting. But what, hopefully what excites me, you know, I've got a few ideas. I can't wait to get going right now. You know, as soon as I finish with you guys, I'm, I'll be straight up in my studio, and uh, where we go again. Oh, you know what, Jonathan? What I absolutely love about you is you get what you're good at. You have developed the self-belief. You've got the confidence. And you are completely following your bliss every single day. And to everybody, all our listeners out there, you know, they're like, wow, I just want a piece of this. I want the inspiration. And, you know, it, it's, it, it shines through everything you say and the way you look and the way you stand and the words that come out and your passion and your... You know, it, I love that. That's so so beautiful. It's such a gorgeous message. Yeah, you don't have to when you're talking about something that you're really interested in, that you really understand, that you really love. You know, there's no script, is there? You you can talk from the heart because, it, you know, if it's the old thing, isn't it? If you're if if you don't lie, you, just, you don't have to learn anything. You just and that's the way it is for me. I you know, if I didn't want to. I worked in a bank when I first left school, and I worked in there for nine months. And I realized pretty quick that looking around me and looking at the other staff, that I wasn't them, I, I, this is not for me, I'm not going to be like this, I'm, I just want better than this. this, this is not me. And it was the artistic side of me, and I don't think it was the lazy side of me. Um, it, I just wanted more, I wanted something else, I felt I was different, and I had that confidence and self-belief, and that's what it's all about. You know, you know you've gone about following your dream. Your dream. It's very easy to, to say, sometimes it's harder to do, with something like art, with wildlife art, a genre where people can appreciate it and buy it and you can make a living at it quite easily if you get your work out there, it's probably easier for a dream that's, you know, if you want to be a mountaineer or something else and you've still got a family and you've got to pay the bills, well, that's much, much harder. You know, this is unfortunate that I can combine what I do, um, not as a hobby, as, as a living and something I love, and that actually does pay the bills and allow me to travel. Because I travel the world doing what I what I love. That's and that's very very fortunate, and I would imagine quite rare because it does afford me to do what I want to do. You know, I'm mean, I I haven't actually started painting yet, and you know it's midday and uh, here in the UK, and um I've you know, I've been out with mates drinking cappuccinos this morning, and, and I figure well if all the great uh, impressionists could do it in a cafe in Paris, you know, a hundred or two hundred years ago, then why not me? This is exactly what I do. I'm not. That's just the way I am. I I, I take it easy. And then uh, when I'm ready, midday, like we are now, I'm going to get out there and get painting. But I won't finish till midnight. So, you know, I'll, I'll put the hours in. I'll, I'll put at least sort of eight to ten hours painting every day, five, uh, six days, no, sorry, seven days a week. Um, you know, funny enough, if I'm away somewhere, I do miss it. I, I, do, I, I don't take it for granted. And, in fact, it makes me appreciate just how much I do love doing it. Mm, oh, I absolutely love that. That is just, Marina, is that just utopia or what? Oh my God, you know, I'm thinking that um, now uh, painting, because of you, painting for me is a self-discovery journey. <laughs> 
and uh, you are such a such a brilliant inspiration to to our listeners. And uh, your your painting is uh, each painting is who you are in that moment in time, and you you turn that into a masterpiece. Oh my God, that that's that's a tall order and. Um, my, my hat off, Jonathan. I think that uh, wow, painting um, is, is more than words because the, the words will go. Uh, they might come back sometimes, but the painting is there and is is the the um, connection with eternity. Uh, thank you so much, Jonathan, for being here. Thank you, Natasha, for for um, o organizing this these great conversations and. Uh, Wow, uh, I, I wish uh, we could uh, stay longer, but there are other people waiting to share their story. Uh, please come back anytime to our listeners, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll organize you, Natasha, some, some great, exciting events, and I'm sure you, you uh, will want to be there and join us. Over to you, Natasha. Oh, thank you, Marina. And Jonathan, thank you so much for, uh, well, sharing your cappuccino moments with us. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Painting <laughs> is more than words. I like that. <laughs> and delaying your painting just for a short while whilst you, whilst you share your beautiful, amazing story with us. You know, it's a delight every time I speak with you. I love your energy. I love your passion. And I just love that you are doing what makes you happy, what you love, what you're great at, and you know what gives you everything in your life that you enjoy. Um, so it's it's been a complete honor. And just before we go, how can people reach you if they want to see your work and if they want to to you know to be able to buy your work? Can you just um, give your your website or you know your Facebook link um, to to our listeners so they can reach out to you? Yes, thank you. Um, it's Jonathan Truss. You need to spell that right. T R U double S, uh, Jonathan Trust, wildlife artist, all separate words. That's my Facebook um, account. So please have a look on that and like my page, and then you can keep up uh, up to date with all the latest stuff. So and I'm sure you'll be inspired just looking at some of those images on there. Hopefully, and you can have a go yourself. It's Jonathan Trust, wildlife artist, or my website, which is a little out of date, but we're doing something about that in the next sort of month or two. It's uh, www.jonathantrust.com. Fab. Oh, Jonathan, thank you so much. Get your paintbrushes out. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing your uh, your finished product of your new tiger. Oh, thank you, Natasha. Yeah, I shall get on with it now. Great. Lovely to speak with you. Catch up soon. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.